Okay, I'm going to be discussing how to assess a patient who has a chest tube drainage system and some of the um, parts of a chest tube drainage system that we need to be aware of and how to assess that um, with a patient who has one. And there are several indications that a patient may need a chest tube placed. Um, some of those would be a pneumothorax or hemothorax, um, possibly from trauma, chest trauma. Um, or perhaps they have some type of condition that leads to buildup of fluid in their lungs. So um, I'm gonna be doing that. Okay. As always, you wanna make sure that you are verifying your provider's order um, to make sure that you're noting what the um, type of chest tube drainage system the patient is in need of. And also if we are just um, setting up a chest tube for air removal, um, or are we setting it up for fluid or blood removal? And so there's gonna be a little bit of differences in those. So this patient here has a dry chest tube system um, placed. So a couple of things you wanna do every shift is make sure that you're assessing your patient's respiratory status, of course, making sure that you are checking their lung sounds, um, their respiratory rate, their um, vital signs, making sure the oxygen saturation is within appropriate um, parameters, and if there's any signs of decompensation in their respiratory system. Another assessment you're gonna wanna do is pain assessment because obviously they do have a tube that is located within their chest wall, so they will have some pain, and you wanna make sure that you're addressing that and treating that as needed. The other thing you're gonna be looking at is the dressing and typically the dressing is, is per policy or how the provider um, prefers that dressing to be, but you're always gonna be checking that for um, any drainage on the dressing, making sure that it's intact and secured as ordered. And also, the other thing you wanna look at is the actual tubing that comes from the chest tube and making sure that it's connected appropriately and secured to the chest tube drainage system. So you can see where there is um, tape that is securing these two so that it doesn't become disconnected. Another important thing that you wanna look for is making sure that there is no kinks within this system. If it kinks off, then you won't be able to have the adequate um, functioning of our system. So with this particular patient, they are, um, they are draining, it's a you know, hemothorax most likely because they're draining blood into the system. So as a nurse, you're going to be making sure that you're monitoring this every shift, and you're also noting at the end of your shift the level of the drainage that's been collected in the drainage chamber. The other thing with a dry suction is you should have, this should be located at a minus 20 centimeters here in this column, which on here it's indicating. And then also if it's hooked to suction, um, you wanna make sure that you do not um, see any, um, you might see some titling or um, bubbling when the patient takes um, a deep exhalation or is breathing. But normally, um, if it's not hooked to suction, you don't wanna hear that continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber. Also, you wanna have the um, prescribed amount of water fluid in this water chamber that is pr prescribed by the provider. The other thing is making sure that the chest tube system is always upright and it's below the level of the patient's heart. Um, if it's not below the level of the patient's heart, it's not gonna drain appropriately. Um, if there are any um, complications that occur with the patient and their respiratory status, make sure that you notify the provider. Okay, so this is a water seal chamber um, chest tube drainage system, and it's basically what it states. It's a water seal chamber so that it prevents any air or any fluid getting back into the patient. And it, it does that by a one-way valve and using a water seal. So with a water seal um, chamber, you know, whether it's hooked to drainage or not, you wanna make sure that, or hooked to suction or not, you wanna make sure that your water seal chamber is, um, has the correct amount of sterile water added to it. Um, typically that is around the two mark, um, but whatever the manufacturer prescribes is what you wanna be having that at. Now there shouldn't be um, continuous bubbling in the water seal chamber because that could indicate a leak. So if, if you do see that, you wanna make sure that you notify the provider or but before that, make sure you check all your connections 
to make sure everything is connected and there's no kinks and also check the insertion site to see if it's dislodged a little bit because you don't want that leak to be occurring because then you're not having an effective seal with your with the chest tube and the system again like with the other um, with with different types of chest tube systems like the dry system with the wet system you also have the column where it's a collection chamber where you can um, be able to monitor the amount of drainage that the patient is having if there is any drainage that you're measuring again these also um, have hangers that you can hook to the bed frame and you always want to make sure that they're upright as well and um, basically that's about it for this.